God. Praise God. Praise God. It's good to be in the God's presence tonight. It's good to be with God's people tonight. Good to see you here tonight. Everyone, last one of you. Thank you, sister. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated tonight. I want to talk to you for a little while. Hope I have the strength to get through. Hallelujah. Let's, the first thing we want to do is again pray one more time. Father, you have insight to give us tonight. You have revelation that you want your people to experience and to know. I am nothing, but you are everything. Your word is true and forever settled in heaven. And that word has an eternal effect upon a believer. And I pray that the word tonight would have an eternal effect upon each and every one of us as we apply it, God. Not just hear it, but apply it in our hearts, in our spirits. We give praise to you and we thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's, it, again, it's good to be here. Praise God. I'm only going to go about 45 minutes, so if you want to time me, amen, if you get with me, we'll go pretty quick, and if we don't, well, we'll go pretty slow then, I guess. Since man has sinned, there's been great harm done to the psyche of man, great harm. Man has been minimized to a place where he in some circles, is considered an animal. There are many that believe that we're just, we're an animal. We have, cats and dogs have the same rights that we have, and whales and all that business have the same rights that we have. And, you know, uh, and just to prove it to you, how many abortions have there been in America since 1973? Do you understand that 53 million people died in World War II, and over that, that many people have died in America because of abortion. You understand? Amen. In the years from 37 to 45, 53 million people died. And since 73, over 50 million babies have been aborted in America. All right? That's a holocaust, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not here to preach. I'll preach against abortion. It is flat out murder and wrong. Hallelujah. And I ain't changing that stance. Now, if you have done something like that, you can find forgiveness from God. You can find his mercy. But I'm just telling you, that's, that's the deal. Hallelujah. What is literally happening here in America, amen, us, is, us that are getting older, we don't got no young people to support us anymore. And, and, and the weight and the weight and the weight of what's happening in America is going to swing on to our young people and they are going to be expected to support a, a senior population that they really are not going to be able to support because America has wiped out over, you know, I don't even know why I got on, but I'm on it, so I'm going to stay on it, over 50 million babies. And who knows how many scientists were killed and who knows how many doctors that God would have given wisdom and understanding. And who knows how many preachers and amen, missionaries could have come out of 50 million people. Now the reason I'm saying those things tonight, ladies and gentlemen, because there's an enemy that wants to destroy us. And that ought to be enough right there to bring us to an understanding that he wants to destroy us. And he's doing everything that he can do to bring about his agenda, and his plan. And so he's messed with us. And unfortunately, most of America has bought into his deal. We bought into what he is saying to us. And we bought into, amen, our world's picture, you know, and what Hollywood portrays to us. Amen. You know what? I don't fit Hollywood's picture. I'm just a couple pounds overweight. <laughs> Hallelujah. So where are you getting all worked up about? It? Because you see, God's got a plan. And in spite of everything that's going on in our world, God wants to work his plan in the lives of his people. And you are his people. However, amen, we got some issues going on. 
Amen. Between our ears, as my father used to say to me, issues going on. We don't see ourselves as God sees us. Okay. Hallelujah. And it's quite a common thing for us to be like this. Why? Because we have fallen. We are, our nature is sinful. Amen. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 that we are, we are far from God and we have become aliens. Amen. And we, have, we are darkened in our understanding of God. That's why we come to the house of God. That's why you get the preacher up here and he preaches at you and he teaches at you and he talks to you and he gets in your face. Hallelujah, because we need to have an understanding that God wants to do something in us and there has to be a voice that we hear. Because you're hearing a lot of voices today. And the majority of the voices you hear are not the voice of God. If you don't understand that, just look at the Garden of Eden. Once two voices were made known in that garden, confusion came and man fell and things began to be disrupted and destruction and decay began to take place. Are you still in the house? Hallelujah. I'm getting worked up here. Praise God. I need to get worked up. I want to talk to you. Amen. You see, God wants to meet with all of us. And God's not the problem. Our understanding's the problem. Say, turn your ear. Say, our understanding's the problem. Our understanding's the problem. How we view ourselves is the problem. Hallelujah! And God thinks a lot more highly of us than we think of ourselves. Let me run that by you again. God thinks a lot more highly of us than we think of ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is right. Praise God. Yeah, it's a good thing. If you would go with me to Exodus chapter 3 for just a moment here. Amen. Chapter 3 and amen. Let's go to verse 2. And man, I, I got a lot of things to say and didn't realize how much I had to say until I stood up here. Hallelujah. But there are any time that God begins to meet with us. There are some things that will take place. And God wants to meet with every last one of us in this room. Now, here's, here's how simple it is, okay? Well, the, you know, we got, we got recyclables in the house and the bag's full. And I got boxes and I just don't like to, I don't, I, my house is small. I don't have a lot of storage room. And all the storage room I have has got storage. Because I don't need no more storage. In fact, I need to get rid of some stuff. And so I decide, you know what, I'm going to go to 50th Street to the recycling place and take some cardboard, and I'm going to take some recyclables. You just, you just take me a couple of minutes, you know. I'm not real strong at the moment, but I can, I can do that. So I, I go over there, and I toss this stuff in, and, and so I pull out onto 13th, which is, which is this just little cruddy road there. There's a couple of houses on it. It's right alongside the, the tracks there, the cement uh, what do you want to call it? And, and, and God's talking to me. All right. Hallelujah. So I just stopped my car. Ain't nobody around. And I began to talk to God. Now, I was not talking to him in English. All right. I was not talking to him in English. And I, God, I don't know why I'm sitting here. There ain't nobody around. Ain't no, nothing happening. It's, it's, you know, I just, but I, I feel your presence. And I know you want to do something. I have no clue what's going on at this minute. But I'm here, God. I'm here. And I'm trying to feel after you. Hallelujah. Today. Now, amen. That should not sound strange to you and to me. Because God wants to work through every believer in this house. Amen. We just got to open our ears and hear what God would say to us and respond to God. A little strange sitting in the car by yourself speaking in tongues. Ain't nobody around. Had no, had no church music. Amen. Haven't heard a song. I'm just with God. Hallelujah. I still don't know what he was doing. 
I even went a different way home. I figured, okay, God, if there's somebody I'm supposed to deal with here, show me. And I got all the way home, and he, he never said anything to me. But something was going on. Something was going on that I didn't quite understand. But in the spirit realm, something was taking place. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, God's got something for us to do. And we got to get out of ourself. And we got to lose our identity in God. And we got to understand who we are. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me tonight? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 So, the Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 3 that God remembered, or chapter 2, God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. Hallelujah. And the Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a flame of fire. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. In other words, there was a supernatural event going on. Amen. Everybody say supernatural. What kind of God do you serve tonight? That wasn't a lot of you. I don't know where the rest of you is at. What kind of God do we serve tonight? He is supernatural. We can expect God to do supernatural things amongst us. Yes, God can use you in a supernatural way. Hallelujah. 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 We don't got a cracker box, God. You don't pull a little package out of a box and say, here's my God. Amen. My God created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. The stars he threw out there. The galaxies that I didn't even know we had more than one galaxy. He did all that stuff. Hallelujah. 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 And he visits a man. Just as he's visited you. And Moses says in chapter 3 and verse 3, I will now turn aside. And see this great sight. And the Bible says that Moses turned aside to see. And when he turned aside to see, verse 4 tells us this. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. You see, here's the thing, brothers and sisters. God wants to work through us. God wants to use us. And God's going to demonstrate himself to us. But our responsibility is to turn aside to see, to wait on God, to see what God wants to do. And when we turn aside to see, then God is going to talk to us. Hallelujah. Anybody here believe that tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, we have been living below where God wants us to live. Amen. We are trying to live below the radar. And it's time to get out there and let let that radar screen just point right where we're at. Hallelujah. And how dangerous we are to the enemy some of us don't want to create any issues because when you want to live for God and do the work of God it's going to create issues issues with the enemy and the enemy is going to look for you and try to hunt you amen but I'm I'm not afraid of the enemy because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world hallelujah you see I see God's giving me a little bit more life amen so there's just two things first of all I want to be available to God And I want to do what I can to destroy my enemy and his kingdom and bring it down in as many lives as possible. Hallelujah. 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 
Whether you realize it or not, he declared war a long time ago. And you, you can try to be a pacifist all you want in this deal, but he'll destroy you as a pacifist. You know what a pacifist is? They, well, we're for peace. No, there is no such thing as peace in this war that you and I are in. Amen. He wants your kids. He wants your wife. He wants your amen, husband. He wants your sons. He wants your daughters. He wants everything about you for only one purpose, and that is to destroy you. So you just might as well make up your mind that you're going to get in the fight. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to get in the fight. Oh, that was pretty weak. My God. I'm going to get in the fight. I'm going to get in the fight. Hallelujah. I'm going to get in the fight. Praise God. They had officers like that, brother. Back in World War II, they had officers like that. Amen. They... They came up and told you what to do, and then they went to the foxhole in the back and let you do all the work. I know, I know. So now, you do believe God's supernatural, do you not? All right? And, and, and God did call you, did he not? And did God fill you with the Holy Ghost? Is that not supernatural? That is supernatural. Come on, you can it's hard to explain how, amen, a guy that's English, amen, at least in language, can speak a language he does not know. How would you explain that to me? Would you would you would you bring that to an understanding for my mind? I don't have an understanding. I don't know how it works. But I know it works. Praise God. All right, now I'm all worked up here. So when God called Moses, here's immediately what he said to God in verse number 11. Who am I? Who am I? Now y'all can look at me and say, okay, that's what Moses said, but you, everyone in this room has said that. Every one of us in this room, when God has called us and dealt with us, amen, one of the first words out of our mouth was, who am I? Who am I? Turn and say, who am I? Do you have an answer for that? Do you have an answer for that? All right, that's a good answer. Do you, do you, do you remember... Do you, do, you remember what, do you remember what Peter said? He said, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. A special people. Now, now, now when's that supposed to happen? I know. When we get to heaven... That's when that's going to happen. We're going to be special in heaven. And, and we're going to be that royal priesthood. And that's not what it says. He says you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a kingdom of priests. I have already felt the unbelief in this room. Right now. Because for some of us in this room. The words that I have just spoken to you, you say, that, that's not me. That's not what I am. I know it may say that, but that, that's not me. I'm not like that. Are, are you still with me? I, I, I'm not trying to be ugly tonight. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's not trying to be ugly. And so our response many times to God is that response of who am I? Turn to him and say, who am I? Who am I? I'm not sure who I am. Amen, amen, amen. When the angel came to Gideon and found him, amen, behind the wine press trying to survive by, by, uh, by making some wheat, amen, and just doing what he could for his family. In Judges chapter 6, verse number 12, when the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, Judges 6 and 12, and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. I think God's confused. 
I think somehow in, the, in, the, in sending angels with messages, that angel just got sidetracked. I'm sure it wasn't Gideon that he was talking about. I'm sure it was somebody else, that, especially somebody that was not hiding behind the wine press trying to thresh wheat. Again, brothers and sisters, amen, your value of yourself cannot be in your own ability, in what other people say about you. It must be what God is saying about you. And we have been brainwashed, and we have been, amen, so conformed to this world that we are living far below where God wants us to be. Thou mighty man of valor. The Lord is with thee. Same thing he said to Moses. And so what is the response of Gideon? Verse 15, he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. This is why we're moving into discipleship teams. Because the image that we have of ourselves is not what God sees. And as long as as we are diluted by the perception of our enemy, as long as we buy into what he is saying, we will not be able to do the will of God. Help me, Jesus. I want to do your will. I want to do your will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every time that God meets with his people, he does not come by accident. God doesn't waste energy. I waste energy. You waste energy. God doesn't waste energy. God just doesn't show up and say, well, I'll see if something's going to happen. When God comes, something is going to happen. And God comes with intent. Tell your neighbor tonight that God has come with intent on Wednesday night. Tell them. God has come with intent. On Wednesday night. Amen. You may think this is just another Wednesday. Amen. In June. Amen. But God has come with intent. God has come to this house. To do something in our lives. God has come to his house tonight. Amen. To bring us to a place. Where we have an understanding. Of who we are. I am part of the kingdom of priests. I am special to God. I am part of something that is holy. Amen. He has given me his spirit. Hallelujah. That when I pray for somebody in the name of Jesus, they're going to be healed. Amen. That when I speak, amen, to that authority of the darkness realm and say in the name of Jesus, devils must go, they must flee. Why? Because of the power that lives within me. Hallelujah. And you. Hallelujah. Why did. Why. Why. Did he lie. The older brother. Of David. Act like he act. For 40 days, a man came out and stood on the hill between Israel and the Philistines with the Valley of Elah. And for 40 days, everybody say 40 days. 40 days, he defied God. He defied Israel. He called them names. He called them cowards he called them dogs amen he felt pretty confident in his ability because he was big he was a bully and he was used to bullying people and he was used to people cowering and hiding amen from him when he began to roar out his threats 
Amen. And the problem is, he was a threat because he was a champion. And for 40 days, people that were covenanted with God hid. Every time he showed up in the morning, Saul was on coffee break in the tent. I ain't coming out. But king, you're head and shoulders over everybody else in the kingdom. Surely you can match him. I ain't coming out. King, you got armor and you got a sword and you got a spear. Surely you can do the job. I ain't coming out. And without any leadership, amen, the Israelites would melt away when the threat came. Many years ago, my ex-brother-in-law and I were, and I'm, I'm all worked up here, man. This is great. I'm having fun. Many years ago, my ex-brother-in-law and I, he, I forget what he was, he was going to pick up some part from some guy he knew. And so we, we were over in a part of a neighborhood uh, somewhere here in Kenosha. And so he gets out of the car and I get out and we start walking towards this guy's garage and this big German shepherd. Starts growling and barking and showing his teeth. You know what I did? No, no, I didn't bark at him. I, I stopped. And he said, okay. He's showing teeth. Hair on the back of his neck is standing straight up. I know what that means. He wants a bite of me. And I don't taste good. But he don't know that. And so I stop. And my former brother-in-law says to me, come on. I said, no, no, I ain't going any farther. Now, here, here's what happened. I watched my former brother-in-law approach this dog. And I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be ugly. It's going to get real ugly. But as he got closer and closer to the dog, I saw something happen that I could not believe. The dog started backing up. And as he backed up, he began to whine. And the tail went between his legs. And my brother-in-law walked right past that dog like he wasn't there. Now, he was convinced. I wasn't convinced. I still didn't go up there. But you understand, we have an enemy tonight that's baring his teeth, and he's growling at us, and, and the hair on the back of his neck is standing straight up. And we're saying, okay, we better back up here. It was incredible to see the dog did not know what to do. The closer he got, the more worried that dog got. Hallelujah. It was great. Amen. From the distance that I was. I didn't want to try it. But I was watching as it unfolded before my eyes. I want you to know ladies and gentlemen tonight. That if we will believe in our God. And we will understand our identity. And who we are. Hallelujah. There is an enemy that's going to begin to back up. When we begin to advance towards him. This ain't time for a picnic. See what we all want? We want to just relax and take it easy. And amen. God, you you work on Sunday. We you come do all everything, God, and we'll just show up and get the blessing. That's that's not how it works. You know, Jesus said to his disciples, occupy till I come or do business till I come. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been sitting on the side long too long. We've been watching too long. We've been letting a few who we think are a little bit crazy walk up to the enemy. Amen. And we watched as, as the enemy backed away from them. And we say, well, that's great, man. He's got something special. He, he must be real powerful with God. Amen. But I, I'm not like that, you see. And I, I can't do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, 
You need to get liberated from your past. I don't know if you've ever heard that before. Because if you're not liberated from your past, amen, it's going to bind your future and what God wants to do in your life. And if all you can do is live in the past, and, and all you can do is look at your failures, and all you can do is look at the things, amen, that are defeating your past, you're going to go absolutely nowhere. But somebody in this house ought to get a little crazy about God and say, you know what, I don't care what kind of past I had. I don't care how many disappointments. I don't care how many failures I had. You know what, I'm going to keep marching towards the enemy. Come on, brothers and sisters. We have got to wash ourselves of our past defeats and our past failures. We got to put them all under the blood of Jesus and we got to do the work of God. Because if we don't do that, we'll still be bound when Jesus comes. So I uh, liberate my future by forgetting my past. I, I know, I know, we're I know we're doing this in, in our groups, but you, you got you understand you, you got to understand the point. It, it, it's not just words. It really isn't. Amen. It's not just words. Philippians chapter three and verse fourteen. I still remember the day. You see, I got I got a past, and although I, my my father and mother were wonderful people, godly people, loved God, well. I was a louse. Back up to verse 13, if you would, for me. I was a louse. Tell, say, Pastor, you was a louse. Go ahead, say it. I don't care. You was a louse. Pastor. Yeah, I was a louse. Hallelujah. And then the day came when I was tired of living how I was living. And I still remember, I still remember an orange couch on 51st Street, 8619 51st Street, the very first apartment that my wife and I had. She was sleeping in bed. I had worked second shift at American Motors. Amen. I was living in a hellhole. I was living and doing things that were wrong. Amen. I was hanging around with people that were high, drunk, and womanizers. And I was on my way to being just like them. I was even going in bars. And at Christmas, I was even doing a few drinks on the job. And on Sunday, I went to church. You know, I'm saying more tonight than I've said, ever said. And you're all paying attention now because you want to hear the dirt. Because everybody likes dirt. One thing, one thing. And spiraling down and away from God. One thing, one thing, amen, kept me. Actually, two things. The prayers of my parents. And regardless how bad I got, I had a deep respect for the Word of God. When I came to church, I knew when the preacher was putting it out, and when he should have studied more and prayed more before he preached. I knew. And I never disrespected the Word. But what I wasn't doing is I wasn't practicing the world, Word. And, and, and the enemy was marring me and tarring me with sin and all kinds of stuff in my life. And I was getting deeper and deeper away from God. Now, anybody here know who Lenny Wolf is? All right, some of you, some of you, he was a apostolic songwriter. In fact, we sang one of his songs tonight. He's more wonderful. Lenny Wolf wrote that song. They had a regional youth youth uh, uh, meeting here in Kenosha, regional. So it involved a number of states, and and they held it at Carthage College. And so they had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of apostolics, young people there, amen. And, and uh, I remember the day I was, I was on Sheridan Road, and I was at the corner of Washington and Sheridan. I was turning left to go over by the, uh, the bicycle 
uh, bowl, whatever that's called. And uh, I was going to play football. And uh, lo and behold, who's sitting next to me in a car? Lenny Wolf. And he asked me some directions. Now, I knew who he was. He had no clue who I was. Amen. And I told him how to get out to Carthage and just stay on the road you're on. And you'll, you'll get there. Amen. And I went out about my business. I thought of my, my, about it that later, you know. You are so far from God. You're so far from what you could have been and have been that uh, you're probably beyond the reach of God. I remember that. I remember as I, I started to tell you, and then, and then I got sidetracked here. I remember coming home from work late at night, man. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't say this to glorify it, but man, I, I, I worked in a second shift job where there wasn't a lot of supervision. There was supervision there, but not, not like first shift. It was common to smell the pot. It was common to see people drunk. It was common to see people just doing things that were not good. I, I remember the days that, you know, I'm just going to say it, just I'm being... You know, one thing I despise today, and I, I'm not trying to be ugly, I despise unfaithfulness between a man and a woman. And there were men that I worked with that were sleeping with girls on the job, and their wife would meet them at the gate. I remember one man who had two precious blonde-haired little girls, and I knew what he was doing in there, and that man I did not like. I may be a scoundrel myself, but I didn't like the kind of scoundrel he had become. That was my environment. And I was sick of it, Brother Gilmore. Sick of it. I was sick of how I was living. But you see, my enemy, my enemy had so brainwashed me that he made me think that God did not want me back. There are people in this room tonight that you have been brainwashed by the enemy. And you need to be blood washed tonight rather than brainwashed. I remember the night that I began to seek after God at home, praying without anybody asking me to pray. Unusual. I, I remember sitting in this place over close to where Brother Nowak's sitting tonight. And I'd put my head down when, when it came to altar call. And, you know, I'm sitting down. There's a, and I'd hear people. I, I, I knew their voice. I, I know their voice. I knew who they, I could tell you who they were. Amen. Because, I mean, they were asking God to help me and, you know, you know, you know, telling me to do things. And I'm saying to myself, why don't you be quiet? Why don't you leave me alone? Hallelujah. I remember those days. I remember I remember the day that I was in a camp meeting and Brother Nathaniel Urshan was preaching on the coming of the Lord. And uh, you know what? We don't preach a lot about the coming of the Lord. You know, you, you all so sophisticated that it's hard to scare you to the altar. Because you say, ah, oh, we heard this stuff before. Ain't nothing new. It doesn't impact like it used to impact. I'm telling you, back in the 70s, there was, amen, just this feeling, my God, God's going to come soon. And, 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 and it's not prevalent right now. It really isn't, amen. I can preach about the coming of the Lord, and, and, and people just ain't going to move. Heard that before. I got a theory, too. You want to hear my theory? I don't want to hear your theory. Get out of here. And I remember being moved on by God. And I remember going to the altar. And you see, now hear me. Listen to me. You may not understand this. If you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the past, and you have spoken in tongues, this is going to sound, I don't mean it to sound flippant in any way. It is easy to begin to speak in tongues. Now, maybe you don't understand that. 
you come into God's presence, you feel a little bit of God, you have learned some mechanics and some understanding in that spiritual realm that if you will surrender, God will speak through you. Uh, that was that was my barometer. If I wanted to check the oil in me, I just come to church said a couple of words, hallelujah, glory to God. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going home. Yeah, I was going home, all right. For six days, I lived like the devil. But I spoke in tongues on Sunday. You know, I, I realized today, you see, it, it's much like Samson. You understand that God moved on Samson. He didn't have to move on Samson. When Samson failed multiple times, God moved on that man. And I'm here to tell you, he'll do that to us too. And you will feel the presence of God. And some of us will even speak in tongues. But if we do not surrender to God, if we do not make a commitment to God, we'll go right back to how we were. You got to understand, that's how I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. I went to that rodeo. I saw it. I participated in it. But you see what happens. The more you play with God, and that's what I was doing, the more you, you, you go through those calisthenics of telling God how sorry you are, and, and then you, you cry a few tears, and then you speak in tongues a little bit. All right, I'm good to go. The more calloused you become, and the more difficult it is for God to reach you and bring you to change. Do you understand by the end of Samson's life, he did not know that the Spirit of God had departed from him? And that's where I was. And so I'm in a service. I know God's dealing with me. I know. I do what I did in the past. I went up to the side of the altar, lifted my hands. I began to speak in tongues. And while I'm speaking in tongues, I felt absolutely nothing. And when I went back and sat down, the first thing in my mind was this. God is done with me. I didn't want him to be done with me. But here's what I understand today. What God was saying to Mark Barnett, son, you played with me. You've told me things in the past. In my mercy, I have brushed you with the wings of angels. I have breathed on you. You have felt me. And in that moment, you have surrendered to me and you've spoken in tongues. But you have not committed yourself to me. And if you're going to be ever free from where you're at, you are going to have to make a commitment to me. Some of us have played with God too long. Some of us have learned how to turn it on and turn it off. And that's not how he wants you to live. He wants an absolute commitment. He wants you to understand who you are. And he wants to work in your life. Obviously, the story's not over because I'm standing here in front of you talking to you tonight. I found his mercies. You see, this time, I meant business. This time, I meant business. But here is the issue that I had to deal with for years. I had a tremendous sense of unworthiness. And I had a tremendous sense of an inferiority in me that I was not good enough and amen that I was just I had blown it so many times that God just you know I'm just lucky to be in the kingdom you know I'm the guy that you put at the back of the row I'm the guy that you pick for the ball game and you just pick them because I'm standing there and you're feeling bad for me and you don't really want me on your team but you're just gonna pick me anyways because you don't want me to go crying to my mama and that was my attitude. I'm just 
I'm just trying to live for you, Jesus. I really don't expect to get anywhere. I really don't. I, I really, you know, I've, 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 I've been such a, a crumb. I'm not worth your time, Jesus, but I'm, I'm thankful that you have given me time and let me come into your kingdom. And I'm thankful for washing away my sins. And, 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 and so I was crippled. And I'm speaking to people tonight that are crippled in this house. And I want you to know right now, it is a lie. And you have believed a lie. Amen. And if, when you quit believing that lie and believe the truth of God's word, you are no longer going to be crippled. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. 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 I'm really talking about an encounter with God. I'm really talking about when God meets with us. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you can read it in the Word of God. We've cited two to you when that God met with Moses and when God met with Gideon, He changed them. He put something in those boys and they were able to accomplish the work of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. My God, my God. Hallelujah. You don't understand, Pastor. Well, that, that's the first thing you should never have said. When you start using words like you don't understand, it really, you don't understand. That's the truth. It ain't, it ain't me. It's you. You don't understand the depths of God's mercy. You don't understand the depths of God's grace. You don't understand that there's a God in heaven that wants you with Him more than you want to be with Him. You don't understand that God wants to use your prayers, use your abilities. He wants to strengthen you with faith to do a work for Him. You need to understand that. You need to get out of that shell. You need to get away from amen, that understanding that you've been given because it's a lie. It's not the truth. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are special to God. Special to God. And everything else is a lie. My God, my God. My God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I... If it wasn't for my father, I wouldn't be here tonight. My, my dear wife had to put up with me, but my father was very kind to me and let me do things here and, amen, put up with my inconsistencies and all that business, amen. But I'm, I'm here today. Never dreamed I'd be doing what I'm doing right now. Because as far as I was concerned, God was done with me. I never dreamed I, I'd be this right now. Hallelujah. I really, I'm telling you the truth. Oh, God. I, I, I remember. Would you go back to verse 13 there? I remember. I remember reading this verse. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it, but this one thing I do. And I'm reading this one day. And it says, forgetting those things which are behind and it hit me. Everything you've been doing, Mark, is about the past. Everything. Your relationship with God is built on the past. The past. Because you see, that's how I viewed myself. I'm just this cripple that's somehow going to make it to heaven. I'm just this guy that, amen, I, I, I shouldn't, but God in his great mercy is going to. I remember reading the words. What's his name? Oh, I can't think of the poet or the writer's name right now. But he wrote this line, and I could, I've got it at home. I got it at home. The saddest words that have ever been penned, what I might have been. I think it's Greenleaf that wrote it, something like that. I think his name, Whitty or something like that. 
the saddest words that have ever been penned is what I might have been. And that's how I lived. That's how I lived. Came to church, did what they asked me to do, fought the battle with myself and my flesh, looked at myself in a pitiful way, always hid, always hid. Some of you are hiders. I know what spirits you got. I'm very familiar with that spirit. You're hiders. The reason you're hiding is because you've been right where I'm at. And some of you are still right where I was at. Because you have somehow bought into the lie that God can't work through you, that God doesn't want to use you. Amen. But you're just, you know what? There's just enough content in you that you're just willing to come to the house of God. Live for God is possible. I wonder how many people have had dreams in this room. And I, I know you you were thinking, that ain't my dream, that's somebody else's. This is great, this is cool. Dream being shared with me. I dreamed, I dreamed one day of preaching in Washington Bowl to a mass of people many years ago. But I said to myself, Ain't me. I, I don't see myself doing that. I don't see myself standing in front of a crowd like that. My God, crowds scare me to death. I'm here to tell you something tonight. When I read that statement in Philippians 3.13, and it said to me, forgetting those things behind, it began to work in me. I have to remind myself of that. I just wasn't one. I didn't just cross a bridge one day and I was home free. I've had to go back to that verse again. I remember the day that I was taking a shower. You may have heard me use this before. It's the truth. I got the landmass of America to wash. And uh, my wife... My wife, uh, my wife used to ask me, why does it take you so long to take a shower? Landmass of America. Well, yeah, I got to use two bars of soap. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you see, when I got in the shower, Leo, I, some people, do you sing in the shower? I don't either. Do you sing in the shower? All right, brother, brother Gilmer sings in the shower. That's neat. Not me. I don't sing in the shower. <laughs> What I do in the shower is I think. That's what I do in the shower. And I think. I go places in my mind. All right. And one day, my God, one day, I went to a place when I was a teenager. I would never tell you or disclose to you what had taken place in my life. I am absolutely so ashamed of that event. It was an awful, ugly sinful event when I was a teenager. I have not shared it to my understanding or knowledge, not even with my wife, because it was ugly. It was dark. And I remember one day showering, and all of a sudden I'm 14 again, and I'm living this incident again. Oh, God. I remember verbally shouting out, stupid, referring to me. That's how much it impacted me. And then something else happened. Wait a minute. That ain't you no more. You've been washed. You've been cleansed. You're not that anymore, son. You see, in order for you and me to do what God wants us to do. You have got to quit living in the past. The devil is content to have you go to church, teach Sunday school, sing, come up and shout and dance, and all that business. He, he's content with you. 
amen, praying for people. He's content with you, amen, doing whatever your pastor asks you to do. He's content with you doing that as long as you do not forget your past. And if he can keep you bound to your past, he knows he's got you. Because when you live in the past, all that's back there is dead. Nothing. Emptiness. Brothers and sisters, the blood of Jesus has covered your past. Let me say to you tonight, you do not have a right. I would say right. To go back to your past. You do not have a right to dwell there. You do not even have the right to think there. Why? Because you've got a God that washed away your past. And to go back there is to go back on the wrong side of the cross. Amen. And try to live back there. And that's not the place to live. Brothers and sisters, you need to understand, amen, that he's taken your sins and he's cast them as far as the east is from the west, never to remember them against you no more. Then why are we continuing to remember our failures and our past when we asked him to forgive us? Amen. I'll tell you why. Because we're listening to a voice that's crippling us. You see, that's the voice of this world. I haven't even got to my notes. I guess I didn't need them tonight. Maybe I'll talk about them next time we get together. So, when are you going to become the apostolic that God called you to be? When are you going to quit letting everything from the past control what you're doing today? Every one of us, is there anybody in this room that is Never been tasted defeat. Anybody? Anybody here never tasted defeat? Anybody here never had to deal with the disappointment of how you lived? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody here that, I don't want you to raise your hand and say anything. I know all about flogging myself. That's how some of us are. We flog ourselves. We beat ourselves down. We do. John said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all, A-L-L, -L, unrighteousness. He's faithful. So, brothers and sisters, it's time for us to take off that garment that doesn't belong to us. It does not belong to you. You are wearing somebody else's clothes. You need to get the clothes that God designed for you. You need to put it on. It fits. It fits. Are, are you hearing me? It fits. It fits. Praise God, it fits. Hallelujah. So there's one thing I do for getting those things that are behind. One more verse. Micah. Seven and eight. Some of you need to make this your mantra. All right. Some of you need to start talking to the enemy. Instead of letting him talk to you, you need to talk to him. All right. You need to tell him some things. First of all, just tell him, just tell him this. One angel. One angel. You understand what I'm saying? One angel. And if you need some side effects, go out and get yourself a chain and just start rattling and say, One angel! One angel! You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Anybody ever read Revelation? One angel is going to put him in a bottomless pit. I can't wait for him to go to the bad place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I close with this. Rejoice not against me, 
oh, my enemy. You've had too much fun at my expense. You have laughed at me. You have said ugly things about me. You have told me I was worthless and no good. You have made me feel like I could do nothing for God. And the worst thing about it is I believed you. And I was wrong. Rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy. When I fall, everybody say, when I fall, I shall arise. Everybody say, I shall arise. I shall arise. I'm telling you, I memorized this verse because it was so valuable to me when I was struggling back there in that place. I remember the enemy was taunting me and laughing at me and telling me how no good I was. Rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Oh, let's bow our heads tonight in this room. Let's bow our head right now. Let's talk to God. God wants to set us free from our past. He really does. God sees you differently than you see yourself. He saw Moses as a deliverer. He saw Gideon as a mighty man of valor. And he sees you and me as that chosen generation, that royal priesthood, that special people who have received the mercies of God, who one day were not a people, but now are a people. He says, I want to hear your praises. I want to hear your praises. I've called you out of darkness into marvelous light. I am not a child of the night. I am a child of the day. I do not walk in darkness. I walk in light. And I walk in revelation and understanding. And it's going to continue in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's reach out to him right now. Come on. Come on. God wants to bring us someplace. We're just not going through these discipleship teams just to learn some things and some nifty tricks and some mind games. No, amen. It's going to bring us to a place where the enemy can no longer brainwash us into thinking that we are something that we are not. Amen. And we have to get to that place where we understand that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So talk to him. Infuse me tonight, Jesus. Infuse me tonight, Jesus. Infuse me. Hallelujah. Infuse me, God. Infuse me with your spirit, with your word. Fill me, God. I don't need to be brainwashed. I need to be blood washed. Blood washed. Just tonight in this room. Listen, brothers and sisters, if you've had failures today, it's time. To ask God to forgive you from a sincere heart and ask him to wash it away. He will do it because he's faithful and just. Amen. The enemy wants to silence your voice and the weapon that he uses is your past. So let's take care of the past so he can no longer silence our voice. I am a child of God. I am a son of the King. Hallelujah. Not in the future, but right now, tonight. I can believe God. God can do miracles through us. God can heal people that we pray for. God can use us to powerfully impact a lost world that's dying all around us, and we have the light. I am the light of this world. You are the light of this world. Hallelujah. 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 In my name, you shall cast out devils. 
you will speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. You will pray for the sick and they shall recover. There is no circumstance, no circumstance that can defeat me when I'm in my God. Hallelujah. And I understand who I am. Hallelujah. No circumstances. Hallelujah. No circumstances. No. Praise God. Come on. Let's reach out to God. I know this is a Wednesday night. I know. Come on. Let's just reach out to God. Let God wash us tonight. Let God cleanse us tonight. My God. I don't want to live below what you want me to live, Jesus. I'm tired of it, God. I'm sick and tired. My God. 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 Yeah. Let's just get in God. Let's get in God right. Let's get in His Spirit right now. Let's just get in His Spirit. Let God deal with this right now. Let God deal with this right now in this room. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I mean, you don't know who you are. That was Moses' problem. Who am I, he would say. Who am I? I can't do this. I'm slow of speech, God. I can't do this. You got to get somebody else. That's not what he wants to do. You want to get God angry, you just tell him to send somebody beside you. And you'll get God angry because he's equipped you for a work. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. I am what I am by the grace of God. There's a grace that's working in my life tonight. It's incredible. I don't even completely understand it. Amen. But there's a grace of God working in me even this night and I don't completely understand it but he's working ha ha in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus come on he, does, he wants to keep you from praying for your family to be saved some of you have been praying for your family to be saved for years You've literally given up praying. You ain't saying much about it now. Now, who do you think put that in your mind? Who do you think told you that that, that could not be answered? It was not God. Who told you you were going to always be what you are? It was not God. I love you, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Infuse me, Jesus, with your power, with your might. With your spirit, talk to me in this room. Fill us, God. My God, I am apostolic. Hallelujah. The same spirit that flowed through Peter flows through me. The same spirit of revelation that came to Paul is also on me, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The same daughters, amen, of Philip who prophesied. There are women in this house Amen, that God wants to use to prophesy through. Amen, just as he prophesied through the daughters of Philip. Amen, where's Agabus in this place? Where is the prophet Agabus? Where are those men and women of God? Amen, that are going to fulfill the duties and the responsibilities. Amen, to this generation, to this area, to the kingdom of God. Amen, here in Kenosha. It's not going to be somebody else. God wants it to be you. Quit saying to God, Lord, send somebody else. And start saying to God, here I am, God. I'm here now, God. I'm moving up to the front of the line. I want to do what you want me to do. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ha. Huh. I worship you. Just, just talk to him. I know it's the middle of the week, and I know we're physically tired. I know many of you have worked all day, and I know, amen, you need your rest. But let's just talk to God. I pray, God, that there be a spirit of revelation come to us, a quickening of your spirit. My God, even this night, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I am tired of being beat down. 
I am tired of living below what you have for me to do, God. I am tired of, oh God, accepting less than what you have for me, God. I'm tired of it. And I am going to be what you want me to be. Hallelujah. In these last days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to shake off the past, God. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to shake off the past. I'm shaking off my failures. I'm shaking off my disappointments. I'm shaking off the lies. I'm shaking off all those things that have kept me from being what you intended me to be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.